Okay, I think we're back from the ad. Let's get back to the code. There we go. Okay, so to actually do something. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah, yeah, let's see. So, uh, right, we need to update this to have the right name. So I think that the approach I'm gonna do is we're, we're just gonna go from kind of like the, the very front of the front end, AKA this button, and it's it's a little badge that has the account on it. And we're just gonna work our way back until we get hit, get, hit the back end. Um, and just kind of like do something, right? So I think for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, let's see, how do I wanna do this? I guess for right now, I'm just gonna define one action that's gonna be a, um, um, increment count or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting because maybe the action is the message. I mean, conceptually, maybe that's what makes sense. Um, let, let's just do something. And then I'm, I'm probably gonna change this around to make this simpler if I can't think of a specific. Um, hmm. No, okay, let's do this. So we're just gonna say that the action is just this message, right? And then what we're gonna say is, we're gonna say uh, return Whatever the action is, just add one to the count. I can find the underscore. There we go. Put that back. So we're gonna we're gonna make a new state that's incremented the previous state's count by one, and that's how that's going to work. And then dispatch. Well, it's kind of interesting, right? Because then all we need to do is we just pass dispatch to that function, and we're done. I think a downside of doing this is like the nature of this this type, this interface, is driven by what's going on in the back end. So now we are like directly coupling the shape of the, the data from the back end to this component. And we may need some indirection at some point in the future. But on the other hand, we're not even looking at it. We're just counting the number of messages for right now. But we could do something fancier based on looking at that that payload. So, but for now, this should do, like assuming the things behind this were implemented, this should do the right thing for what I'm kind of imagining I wanna do for right now, which is just to have a count of activity. Um, I think that this is going to fall down though, very rapidly once we actually start using this, because the count is gonna just keep on going up as there's new messages. It's never gonna go back down. It's not gonna be reset. Probably what we need to do is have some way of saying, hey, now we've actually viewed the messages and reset the count. Um, I guess, we can do that, right? So we have an on click on the button. So we could say when the button's clicked, um, mark viewed, right? Let's let's let let's implement that, and then we'll go back to like working our way back. So let, let's say uh, mark viewed, 
Um, and then yeah, that's not necessary. Uh, const handle click uh, is mark viewed and then unclick. <laughs> Maybe so. Um, I think we might need to use use callback here. Because mark viewed and unclick are coming from, in the one case from props, in the other case from a hook that's being derived from somewhere else. So I'm concerned about this, this callback function being regenerated on, on render and then forcing re-renders of the button that are unnecessary. Okay, so the type here Ah, so here's where this falls down. So we don't want to actually have that inside of the state. We want to have um, tasks, uh, callbacks, or something. Oops, yes. There we go. Um, and then, there we go. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, we can do actually do like dot 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 tasks status and then provide mark viewed that calls dispatch. Now we have to do something different. Right. So now. We're gonna define an action interface. Uh, probably just, yeah, what are we gonna do here? Type action Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So test that uh, we have an event. <laughs> so we, get, we could, Hmm. 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 We could be clever here. Uh, and then action is what is the action type here. So, and then we dispatch event reset, which is compatible with the action type. Uh, and task status websocket message also has event. So we have a, um, oh boy, what's the word? We have a union of different types that is distinguished by a certain field or property <laughs> that's present in all of the things that are inside of that unioned uh, type, whatever the word is for that. Okay, and then in action, now we do something different, uh, or rather in the dispatch, right? So to, based on the action event, we do different things. So we have a pass through, if we don't recognize the event, uh, we just say, okay, we do nothing. If it's reset, we reset the count to zero. And if it's task status change, we increment the count by one. All right, well, it's a good thing I had this dispatch Uh, to make it easy to do this. Um, do I... I'm wondering if I need a use callback here. I don't think so. Maybe? 
Nah, maybe. Thinking about how changes percolating through kind of the render tree might result in churn of this function that might force additional re-renders. But at least we're caching it here before it actually gets included in the in here. So I think this would be fine. Okay. So that means that when we click the button to open the task list, that will clear that count back to zero. So now this count is really the um, the number of status updates we've we've seen. Um, and the last thing to do now is to implement this method in the data provider to hook it up to the back end. Um, yep, custom methods. We get, we got a lot of those. <laughs> Let's put it next to this other task one. Uh, async. Subscribe to tasks uh, status. Does this need to be async? I don't think it does. Um, no, no, we're not. We're not awaiting. It's not a promise. Um, what's funny here is we have a type of what's being passed to dispatch, and we can pull that type in here as well. Although setting the type of the message here isn't going to affect what we see here, right? Because this um, this call to this method is just, it's any, right? Because this data provider is not connected to any information about the types inside of the actual underlying implementation. But, you know, maybe at some point we wanna do some stuff with the message in here. Okay, so. Um, interesting. Maybe that actually works. <laughs> As is, right? So we create a new WebSocket. We take the base URL and replace HTTP with WS. And then we add WS tasks, which might be the right endpoint. How does it know? Well, it's it's just inferring that from, from other things. Uh, are we missing... Oh yeah, 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 comma needs to be there. Uh, message. Oh, this is this is a spurious error, right? Because this is just the type definition. At some point, I should figure out what ESLint rule is interfering with, like, with that, right? Because of course, this is unused. It's defined but never used because this is a type definition. It's not. It's not the body of a function. It's not an argument to an actual function. Anyway. Um. Okay. Event data turns the data of the message and then we attempt to parse it and then we call callback with it. Uh, very simple, right? Might even work. Um, yeah, that, that, that literally, that could be it. Um, let's give it a shot. We have a white screen. I've broken everything. The data provider threw an error. Excellent. Should return a promise. Excellent. All right, let's... Um, Yep, this is fine. <laughs> Let's 
just refresh and see if we can, uh, yeah. So in our hook, we're calling data provider dot subscribe to task status. And then in get, what was the error? Uh, data provider subtype dot apply, yada, 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 dot then is not a function. Why? Because we assume that when we call a method, uh, it is async. Okay, cool. So, turns out that's part of the contract. <laughs> uh, that the call to this is itself, itself uh, an async method. Um, I guess that's fine still. Kind of weird. Right, so that means that what this needs to be async or awaited rather, which we have to, you know, be an async function to do. Effect callbacks are synchronous to prevent race conditions. Put the async function inside of. Um, yeah, okay, async function inside of the, the anonymous, the arrow function, and then fetch data. Oh, oh right, right, of course, because the, so, um, hmm, how is that gonna work? Right, this function, the, the outer function needs to return a function to unsubscribe. Um, okay. Function. Uh, subscription. figure out how this is actually going to work in a second. Let's just do one part at a time. Um, I guess I have to do something where I do like let subscription. We don't know what that type is, but let's just assume that's the right thing. And then we, then we can assign it in here and then we can fetch. And then if subscription, then we can uns unsubscribe. Okay. Are you are you happy or happier with that? Okay. It it at least loads. Let's clear all the old errors and refresh one more time. Are we uh, are we connecting to the back end? Yeah, it's not an error related to anything we're doing. Uh, let's look at the network tab. WebSocket, NS error WebSocket connection. Uh, so, WS localhost 8080 API WS tasks. What happened? Connection refused. Uh, localhost 8080. API WS tasks. Right. Um, no, that should be fine. Oh no, it's the other way around. Right. This is what I get for trusting Copilot. <laughs> Tasks, WS, not WS tasks. If we had like a WebSocket service, maybe the other way would have been right, but. All right, so let's refresh. Let's filter just for WebSocket connections.
Yeah, he's still six coding. Yeah, I mean. It's 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 somewhat helpful. Um Why am I not seeing a WebSocket connection? Very helpful. We have some something buried deep inside that's using something that React doesn't like, and uh, yeah, nothing I can do about that. Is this it? Nope, there's nothing there. Um, Oh no, that, that's it. Yeah, a, uh, API tasks WS. Okay, so th theoretically, what should happen here? Like, if we go to a stream, let's let's test out uh, like running a task. Uh, we got a lot of errors suddenly. What's the problem? Uh, Vite is complaining about stuff. Okay, cool. Local is 3,000. Weird. Uh, anyway. Uh, if, if we go to a stream that... Here we go. So this stream does not have transcription or silence detection. So those are both, both uh, background tasks. So if I go to transcript, it's a lie. <laughs> it's not running. Uh, check status. Okay, so we did have this already, uh, but it's broken. Okay, cool. So let's start both of these. So what I would expect right now is that there to be a one here. Aha. Oh no, that's feet. I don't care about that. And if I go to transcript and I click start transcribe, I would also expect there to be a one there. See, and I can see, hey look, processing, transcription, silence detection complete. So there should be a bunch of messages coming in, but we got nothing. Um. Nothing at all. So let's add some debugging here. Uh, is on message the right thing? Like we had some stuff in the console where we were testing out things. Um, let, let's do, let's just use literally the same code that I was using when I was testing things out, right? Um, we shouldn't need to send anything to the server, but we can, we can console out, uh, uh, a message here. There we go. Okay, so hopefully get some, some more details. Just get rid of warnings if it's gonna be just a lot of spam. So I don't see 
Let me turn off requests. I don't see a message about our um, this stuff happening. Like we didn't see connected to task WebSocket. Are we missing something here? On error? Or uh, we could do it this way, add event listener, close. Let's just add a bunch of uh, uh, event listeners here to handle different different cases. Maybe one of these will tell us what's happened. Firefox can't establish a connection to the server. Cool, maybe that's fundamentally the issue. Is that it's not able to connect. But it's not really telling me that. Uh, I mean, I do have a working example in the history here. WS localhost8080 API records tasks. Ooh. Um, I think what I have is slightly different. Yep. That's why. Wrong path. So, doubly wrong. But I mean, really, that's on me for not even knowing my own API. Oh, it was there, and then I reloaded. All right, so I'm not expecting anything to appear here until, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's actually legitimately running now. Um, so like, this is complete, and I could just load the result, but I, I'm just gonna run the task again. Now I was hoping that what we would see would be a one. Oh. Cannot establish a connection to the server at WS localhost8080 API records tasks WS. Error? Type error, target. Okay, so why? WS localhost 8080 API records tasks WS. Okay, so what's up with that? All right, task API. All right, started processing request. What if I hit local uh, WS localhost 3000? Um, I mean, we look at that. Uh, let's look at the Nginx config actually. Oops. Um, so the, the, the service, like there's nothing listening on 3000, right? So if you look at the, actually the Docker compose file, um, like the service is listed on 3000, listen on 3000, but that's on the individual containers and those are not exposed ports, right? So that's internal to the individual containers. It's not accessible. Um, the proxy is listing on 8080 and then dispatches out to the individual things on port 3000.
Why use the lowest instead of zero 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 for containers? Um, what do you mean? Oh, in the various places where I'm saying localhost in the in the Docker compose, uh, it works. Why use 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 for the containers? What did I change here? Records, tasks, WS, yeah? Records, resource. All right, because, right, because the tasks API is different than all the, well, some of the others, right? The other services are behind like API stream ingestion, API silence detection, because I wanted to make it so that React Admin could interact with tasks as if it was another kind of record type. It's API records tasks, uh, but it won't bind to all IPs, maybe not related to something I use uh, by previous experiences. Um, right. If we were talking about like all the places I'm using localhost here, it's to tell this like application code what to talk to versus, um, So as an example, let's, let's think about this. So like the YouTube API is listing on a certain port and that port is driven based off of what's in backend variables. Uh, port 3000. Oh, and the host it is 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0 Like for the purposes of binding, right? The places where I'm using localhost are for the pur purposes of connecting to a thing. Right? So the the Rust code where we're actually like listening on an IP address import, right? To be able to indicate what what um, network interface to to listen on and what port to listen to, it's coming from these environmental variables. For the last six months, at least. Um, so I don't know why Vite has decided. Browser 8080 HTTP localhost, localhost 8080 WebSocket failing to localhost. Cool. This was working before. I don't know why this is not working now. But maybe that's indicative of something. <laughs> uh, maybe that's why the WebSocket so web socket stuff isn't working either. Let's try... Um, what if I do this? Right? And I click this. Hey, look, we got messages. So this works. but the version that we have in code does not work. Um, that's interesting. It's so like this works, but the version that is happening here, oh no, it's connected now. It says connected to tasks WebSocket. Oh, look, four, it works now. I did nothing, <laughs> it works. And then I open it and the, the number goes away. Why was it four though? 
That's interesting. Um, oh, I probably know why. The beauty of coding, yes. Uh, so, the reason we're getting this message twice is because of React. <laughs> uh, because of strict mode. Right, so when we do this, and this uses use effect. So what should happen is that when the component gets unmounted, unsubscribe gets called. Unsubscribe is not a real thing. Uh, hold on, subscribes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's in data provider. We should be returning uh, a promise with an object that has unsubscribe method, and that unsubscribe method calls the BS that close. So, oh, hmm, I bet I know. Could it be? that when React mounts and unmounts and remounts the component, that happens before this promise resolves? So, let's do this a different way. I think we have to do it a different way. Um, but what we can do, let's console log. Uh, what's going on here? Just to, to double check that my assumption is correct. All right, so if I reload, Yeah, see, unsubscribing. So it, it mounted the component and it unmounted it immediately and remounted it. So we would see the unsubscribing from task status message once from that intermediate unmount, but subscription is undefined. Um, so, hmm. Let me think about that.
right. So I'm 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 thinking here that I'm running into some difficulties because trying to maintain <laughs> essentially right so having this be tied into the the use effect and kind of the the life cycle of the component means that we are attempting to disconnect the web socket and then reconnect it really quick and that doesn't seem to be so good so i think what i might need to do here is to kind of lift up and do seemingly what the uh the enterprise version of react admin is doing and have kind of a more abstract subscription where the maybe we we have some singleton thing elsewhere that holds the WebSocket and manages the subscription so that we're not trying to subscribe and unsubscribe inside of the life cycle of the component. Um, hmm. If nothing else, like some kind of caching, right? So the because right now we create the WebSocket and we hook onto it, and then there's no longer any kind of reference to get at it once we've left this method, other than through unsubscribe, uh, because the, the message is being passed through the callback. So I wonder if, like we, we essentially somewhere are storing the WebSocket and we say, oh, do we already have the WebSocket? Then we don't need to recreate it. But then we essentially, like we have to own uh, a callback like at this level that then we then pass messages onto. So you can have multiple things subscribing to that versus directly subscribing through the WebSocket, which is the thing I was talking about before. Um, but anyway, I think I am going to have the stream end a little earlier today. Uh, and we're gonna go find someone to raid.